Hello and welcome to Round 11 coverage of Grand Prix Sydney. I'm Brian David Marshall. I'm joined by Marshall Sutcliffe, and we are watching 10 and 0 Ben Sec versus 10 and 0 Seth Manfield. Seth Manfield, of course, the number one player in the top 25 rankings. And Ben Sec is going to make the first play of the game. And he plays a steadfast Cathar. Nice. Little little beater. 2-1 that attacks as a 2-3. Yeah, and that's pretty much exactly where Ben wants to be with his, his effectively mono-white deck here is getting the beatdowns going as early as possible. And uh, wow, that's brutal. Seth Manfield immediately going to kill it. <laughs> He's going to make mischief. And, uh, you know, it attacks as a 2-3, but as it sits on the battlefield, it's a 2-1, and that makes it susceptible. H how do you feel about make, make mischief? Like has that card, you know, I, I, you know, my initial reaction to that card was I want, really wanted it to be a, an instant, mm. but it's still been pretty good. Yeah, I don't think it's very good. I think it's medium. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I, I would expect that Seth probably has it as his 20, 21st card in his deck. You know, it's okay. So Dawn Griff from Ben Sack, and then uh, Attack for One and an Insatiable Gorgers. We've seen a lot of that guy. Who's hungry? Yeah. The hippo. They're always hungry. And I got to say, Insatiable Gorger is a really good card against Ben. <laughs> no, it really is. Like, yeah. he's just got a bunch of small creatures. And, you know, he wants to, to try. Like, he, it kind of demands a removal spell of him pronto. And if he doesn't have it, he's going to take infinite damage from it. All right, this is a good answer, though. Ironclad Slayer has three power, so it can get in the front. And this is a big turning point here. If Seth has a way to get rid of that Slayer, it's going to get... He's going to get in for six damage. Right, and he's in the statistically most likely color combination to have a way to absolutely. deal with it. He absolutely is. There's a lot of cards he can have here. Plays his fifth land. Borrowed Malevolence would get the job done as well. Th th oh, yeah. There's any number of, yeah. of Escalate. Combat tricks, yeah. Escalate <laughs> cards, <laughs> removal spells. It, he needs basically anything. And there it is. Alchemist greeting. Yeah, just, hi. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hi, I'm the alchemist. <laughs> Take six. Wow. So, by the way, the last time Ben, ben Sack went 9-0 at a GP, he won it. It was Grand Prix Melbourne in 2002. Oh, there's Thalia's Lancers. Okay, that works. That's a nice answer. He didn't search up anything, did he? He doesn't have anything yeah, to search no up. Yeah, no targets. Fair enough. Whatever. It's still a 4-4 first strike for five mana. And now... Yes. <laughs> so it's like, take one. Yeah, he for Obligated to block with the Insatiable Gorgers. I mean, obligated to attack. And Ben Sack was obligated to block. <laughs> he could have blocked the Devil. Yeah. It just gives up a lot of life total in the process and makes a lot more sense to take one so there. Conduit of Storms and Thermo Alchemist come down for Seth Manfield. Don Griff flies over on Ben's turn. There's a Sigardian Priest. And uh, there's another Sigardian Priest. So Ben is uh, set up pretty nicely here. Ben's going to read the Conduit of Storms. Take a look at the other side. Interesting part about the new uh, werewolves BDM as well is that, you know, they're no longer human yeah. at any point. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're, they're horrors. werewolf horrors, yeah. and then they become Eldrazi werewolves. And uh, Conduit of Storms, you know, becomes a 5-4 when you transform it. It costs three red red to transform. But on either side, it can be tapped down with the Sigardian Priest, and yeah. that's really what's going to be important for Ben as he chips away with that Dawn Griff. Yeah, Fal Falcon Wrath Reaver comes down for Seth. Not super excited about it. There you get a look at Conduit of Storms. Those are some <laughs> long arms on that werewolf. Scraping the sides like Freddy Krueger. It's like the Kevin Durant of werewolves. <laughs> so the clock right now is Dawn Griff versus Thermo Alchemist. Yeah. And, and Ben's got a little bit of... Uh, 
catching up to do on that. So there he goes. He gets Seth down to 12. Yeah, but, but Ben also has the ability to set up a turn where he can attack with the Lancers, e even getting through Seth's defenses potentially, thanks to the two Sigardian priests. He can go tap, 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 hit you for six. So he, he's actually in a really good position here, especially because the Lancers are effectively holding off the creatures on the ground anyway. Like, the priest isn't even what he needs. Oh, Dance with the Devil. Dance with Devils? Okay. Yeah. It's getting interesting. The Devil Army. Looks like Seth's out of cards, though. Yeah. So he got, he got two activations in with the Thermo Alchemist. And now has sort of a, a real problem for Ben in dealing with these, these yeah. devils. Yeah, he, he, he can't block them with the Sigardian priest because he'll lose the priests with each one. Yeah, right now Seth could just jam in with all three. He's still going to get three in. And, and you know, he, he moves ahead in just the, the straightforward race. Yeah, he'll start. Chip, he'll he'll lose one per per attack that he attacks with all three, but he's fine sure. with that. And if he attacks in conjunction, it's going to make Ben probably have to just go ahead and spend mana to tap down the two bigger, potentially bigger creatures, the insatiable gorgers and the conduit of storms. Remember, the conduit can become a five four whenever Seth decides. It's right. three red red, but there's no tap involved with that. He can just do it after blocks whenever he wants <coughs> this is a complicated situation here for manfield <laughs> and he has sorted it out in they go and clear, clearly ben you know ben had the option to tap some stuff there and he chose not to mm -hmm. <coughs> it's a little awkward for him with the priests Okay. Looks like he may be chump blocking. He's going to trade with the devil? <sighs> be surprised if he traded off Sigardian Priest for a devil. He could just spend two mana and just tap the devils if, you know, if he wanted to do that. Okay, he is blocking two devils. Wow. And taking six? Taking two from the Falcon Wrath Reaver and one from the... Oh, sorry, that's the Reaver down yeah, there? Yeah, 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 one yeah from my the bad. Devil. Sorry, sorry. <coughs> I thought that was the Insatiable Gorgers down there still, but that, that got eaten already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, my bad. That got lanced. Yeah, still, this is, is going to be... This is going to hurt Ben pretty badly. He takes three, and he could even take... He could take five. Four, five, and then six from the Thermo Thermal Alchemist. Alchemist. Wow, this this is uh <laughs> This is getting a little sketchy here from, from Ben's side of the battlefield, and you can see it on his face. He, well, he I think is and very and concerned. He just decided he just needed to bite the bullet here yeah, and yeah. deal with these devils and makes if sense. He, if he eats the priests, that's great. If he doesn't, that's also great. And this still does have Ben using his Lancers. Oh, no. What did you find, Seth? This is his top-decked card for the turn. Spiteful motives. And he's going to use that to just pile in three more damage here. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then untap ten uh, if Seth gets to untap with his Thermo Alchemist. If this is assuming that he just throws all the devils at yes. Ben's face, which I think is what he's going to do here. Wow. He's like, okay, first strike damage. Wow. Yeah, I think he's just going to go upstairs with these devils. I don't think he cares about the priests as much anymore. He, he's got him on a one-turn clock if he does. Oh, interesting. He, he is actually deciding, well, do I just want to maintain board presence here, or do I want to reduce the clock to one? He's like, okay, you take one. a black card in Ben's hand. What do you think it is? I mean, it, I think it could only be Triskaidekaphobia. 
What about the Vengeance? Well, that's a gold card, though. This looks like a... Oh, you mean just a black like card. A, just a black card. Oh, man, Seth at 12. <laughs> it's not going to work. <laughs> this is a huge decision for Seth. Upstairs. <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> a universal magic... Uh, yeah, which six. is going to put him to two. And then remember, he's got the Thermo Alchemist at the ready, which he's going to use right now uh, in response to the uh, Sigardian Priest. Okay. And I think that's it. Because if Seth gets to untap, he just immediately activates the yeah. Thermo Alchemist. Wow. Yeah, Bensek needed to find his, uh, his Campaign of Vengeance there. That, that's what he needed. That would have helped. Well, would have, uh, probably would have won on the game. Maybe. I don't know. He attacks for what? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He gains three. He goes to four. No, he's still dead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the chat also, by the way, uh, pointed out that the Thermo Alchemist is a human. Ooh. <coughs> and therefore cannot be tapped. Oh, by the Sigardian Priest. It, it it wasn't relevant to how yeah. the game played out because Seth just responded by tapping it, which he was sure. going to do anyway. But th that is a very, very good point. People have to be careful. I think that... We've seen that, we've seen that happen a couple times already yeah, this weekend. Yeah, we have. It, it's weird because I think that, you know, the human tribe tends to be in green and in white. And when you have humans that aren't in those colors, it's easy to forget. You know, you think, oh, Thermo Alchemist is probably a devil or whatever, right? right? right. And, and, and you just forget it's a human shaman. Exultant cultist as well. You yeah, know, it's a yeah. wizard. It's, it's a human wizard. See the two players laughing as they shuffle up. Looks like Ben made a couple of changes to his deck. Yeah, Ben's one of the really good-natured guys. You know, he's he gets it. He's not going to be happy about losing, <laughs> but yeah, he's yeah. going to take it well. He's not. Yeah, he's not going to. He's not going to go. Uh, Crazy over. So, what do you th what what do you think Ben brought in? He doesn't seem to have a lot of you know. There's there's field creeper down here. Oh, we're gonna look in on uh, just Owen Turtenwald versus John Finkel. Definitely don't think he wants field creeper. By the no, way, no. I'm thinking maybe uh, Faith Bear Paladin. Yeah, definitely. Does, does he not have that in his deck? He does not have it main deck. No. That's just like better than campaign of vengeance. I think. So daring sleuth uh, trades with uh, the Skinner. Yeah, it looks like a cultist staff on the battlefield for Finkel. Two teammates going at it here. Yeah. Naval gas trailed for Turtenwald. Uh, Cryptolith Fragment was the play for John there. Also, Owen worships John. He's a magic player. No, <laughs> no, no. This is a different level. This yeah. isn't your normal, yeah, I really like John. I think he's the best. This this, this is different. Yeah. This is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I got to breathe the same air as John Finkel for the weekend. Yes. <laughs> That's the kind of brags you'll get from Turtle yeah. World, you know. So Pat Guardian was the play from uh, from Owen. And uh, interestingly, he did it on his turn while John was tapped out. Okay. Chose not to play it with uh, Flash. I mean, it still played with Flash, but you know what I mean. Just decided to play around counter spells there. Yeah. John, a, you know, two decades long lover of counter spells. All right, we'll keep you updated on uh, what's going on in this match while we go back to our match between the two 10 0s, Ben Sec and number one ranked Seth Manfield. Okay, so Steadfast Cathar again from Ben Sec. Let's see if it survives. Yeah. Last one sure didn't. All right. Skin invasion there from Seth. Okay, so it might maybe he has a plan. Skin Invasion, and of course, when the Enchanted Creature dies, you get to return Skin Invasion to the battlefield, transformed. Yeah, it becomes a 3-4. It becomes a 3-4, which is the Skin Shedder. Well, that's quite a stop sign against Ben's deck, too. Yeah, it is. Uh, but there's a Sigardian Priest. We're going to see 
Make mischief again. No. Conduit of storms. Oh, nice. Yeah. Guardian, Guardian of Pilgrims. Pilgrims. Yeah. Pumps the guy. Pumps his uh, steadfast guitar. And in it comes. Tap with the Guardian Priest. And Insatiable Gorgers makes its inevitable appearance on turn four. Card's good. Yeah. The Vampire Berserker. Very tappable. You see three mana. Oh, choking, t choking restraints. And get in for four and keep the uh, priest up and mana to activate this it. Is, this is going much better yeah. for Ben Sack than <laughs> previous. This is uh, kind of textbook for him. Indeed. There you see choking restraints. Seth, Seth's got a reader. It's his own card. Yep. <laughs> he checks skin invasion. Do what I think you he wanted to do. see if it was a human or not. He's like, can I kill that and get something that can not be tapped by the Sigardian priest? And the answer is no. <laughs> <coughs> Five lands for Seth. Plays a swamp. Ben realizes that Seth's taking a think, so he puts his cards down and just says, okay, let me know when we're ready. Seth's just trying to figure out how he can stabilize right now. He'll worry about winning later. Five mana. And it's Ruthless Disposal. Aptly named. Wow, that's a huge swing. Sacrifices his Choking uh, Restrainted Gorgers, which is a, a great thing to do. Discards. I can't see what card that is, but uh, he ends up with the 3-4 from the Skin Invasion. Wow. Yeah, that was a huge swing. He's left Ben Sec with just a lowly 2-2 two -two now. Kills the priest and kills the steadfast Cathar. Wow. That priest was overkilled. Indeed. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Fiend binder. Not a great spot here for Ben, though. No. Seemed like it was going so well. It, so it really it really did. He he did say the first seven or eight points of damage are very easy for his deck to deal. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he was thinking about with Triscuit Echophobia. Mm, okay. And and also the Campaign of Vengeance then. Yeah. In comes the Conduit of Storms. Again, Seth can transform it here. This is a side event announcement for Kyle Wyatt. He does not. Okay, it's a red in his mana pool, which yeah. he gets to use in a second main phase, so he'll have access uh, to six two. mana if he doesn't play another land. Doesn't do anything. Pass the turn. Looks like a near Heath Chaplin in hand for Ben Seth. Yeah, what is Seth up to here? Why why didn't the skin shedder attack? He just didn't want to trade it off for the fiend binder on a double block. It just felt like Ben did not have a lot of great situations there. There there's the Faith Bearer Paladin. I like that guy. Yeah. All right, we get to see. What is it? Spiteful motives? What do you have? It's going to transform now? Does make a lot of sense? Oh, maybe he's holding Dance with Devils again? Yeah, that could be. Would have been good. Yeah, yeah, there it is. All right, that makes sense. Bensek has to know it was that or a removal spell or whatever. This is 
Yeah, the 3 4 life linker. That makes things a little more interesting. Yeah, a lot more interesting. That's a big problem for Seth as a blocker. No, it's not. <laughs> Alchemist greeting. Yeah, that's just a beating. I, I still have not seen that card mad. <laughs> I've just seen people tap, yeah. you know, sorcery speed throttle with it. Yeah, and it's not that great in that scenario, but hey, it gets the job done. Faith Bear Paladin down. And one devil gets in. Yeah. <coughs> this allows him to leave up good blocks still. And there's a near Heath Chaplain. Yeah, it's a little awkward against all these little devils. It's good at taking out the chaplain itself. It's good at taking out the one ones that it can create. I did check uh, Seth's list, and he does not have a smoldering werewolf, which would also be excellent <laughs> against bad. <laughs> Your favorite card. I do like that card. Yeah, this is a great matchup for it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he just doesn't have it. There you see the near Heath chaplain, lifelink. Always good against the deck with mountains in it. One of the better uncommons out of Shadows over Innistrad. Near Heath Chaplin has done a lot of good work in this format. And will continue to even with the introduction of Eldritch Moon. Two cards in three cards in hand for Seth Manfield. Just and there's Gavany Unhallowed. Interesting. Uh, <laughs> I like Seth's list here. This is a cool deck. So Gavany and Hallett, every time a creature of his dies, he gets to put a plus one, plus one counter on Gavany and Hallett. Yeah, and look at that. Devils and kind of expendable creatures, you yeah. know. We saw the Ruthless Disposal. That would have been nice oh, with that card out. Sweet. Yeah. A little extra value here and there. The guy can get big. There's an Apothecary Geist and a possible path to victory for, for Ben yeah. Jack. He's got a little... That's big. I mean, remember, Ben had a really quick start. Seth's down to 11 here. Like, in the race, Ben is winning. On board, Seth's ahead, but yeah. not by a ton. I, this is really close, actually. Now you look at Apothecary Geist. It's like, what? I need to show you ID? I've got, I'm a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to assume that's cough syrup. There. Okay. Looks like a packaged goods store to me. <laughs> All right, now, Seth. Just All right, now he's going to swing it too. Here comes Conduit of Storms. Here comes Skin Shatter. Yeah, again, Seth does have the requisite mana to transform the Conduit here as well, if he chooses to. That's an important dynamic that we see here. It can become a 5-4 whenever Seth wants, and that makes blocking it pretty awkward for, for Ben. Seth seems like he's just really wanted to preserve the option for just keep I it. I think he just has other stuff to yeah. do. Yeah. Certain death. Kills the flyer. Yeah. Drains two. Wow, man. Seth just has, like, every single time Ben tries to do anything, <laughs> Seth just has just the right answer for it. All right, there's a swap for Ben. I don't know that he has anything to play with. It doesn't look like he does. Looks like he's holding an extricator of sin, one other card, and a swamp right now. Oh, Subjugator Angel. Okay. Okay, that Tap could be a business. Your team. How much damage does this get him in for? Eight? I don't think enough, but it does. No, it does. It would gain him three he, life. He would get, get to gain three. He gets in for eight. He would drop Seth down to five and put himself at 13, possibly facing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven on the crackback if Seth transforms his werewolf, meaning still alive. 
Wow. And, he and, then, and then he cracks and then in he for just four. cracks in for four with yeah, he, the subjugator. Look, Seth just, has had answers for every little edge that Ben's tried to get ahead on, but now he's <laughs> Ben can leverage the subjugator angel to force Seth to have Seth. yet another answer, and I think he just goes for it here. He needs to get him to six. He could also get away with just attacking with the two three powered creatures if he wants and then try to attack for four in the air. Yeah, but I, I like this better. Seth, Ben's going to go to 13. Seth drops to five. This makes it really tough for, for Seth to do like a massive attack here. He can get in for a pretty good chunk. But now Ben has a win condition in the air. Huge swings this game. Yeah, it's been a great game. I'm rooting for Ben Sec because I want to see a game three. <laughs> <laughs> we know we're going to get our undefeated player, you know, out of this match here as these guys are both 10 and 0. But uh, I like watching them play. This is awesome. It's been kind of weird here down in Sydney. I, I, I was talking to you about this earlier, BDM. It's th the field. You know, what is it, 1,100, 1,200 players? It was, it was big, yeah, right in between Big there, group, yeah. but, you know, we'll get 2,000-player fields sometimes in North uh, America and, and, and Europe. Upward. And we've got all the pros in town for the Pro Tour next weekend. And so it's a very pro-dense field. The, yeah. th there's a lot of professionals playing against each other. It looks like Seth is going to just transform his conduit here. Yeah. So Now conduit of Emrakul instead. Gets in for five. Yeah, you get a look at the conduit of Emrakul. Quite a ghastly that looking. A, that is an monster. unnatural beast if yeah. there ever were one. And now, what is the draw for Ben? God, Seth? Ben is so close. How he does he punch through four. one extra point of damage here? Oh. Looks like he's going to yeah. just try to pad his life total and maybe give him a couple of 1-1 one, one flyers off of that uh, near Heath Chaplin. Chaplin. Yeah, because yeah, it must be blocked here. Seth has good blocks. He's got a 3-4 that can just gobble it up. But then Ben will go up to 11, which pads his life total and tries to prevent a crackback win from Seth. And it gives Ben something to do in the form of making two 1-1 one, one flyers, which would then be lethal on their own as well as the Subjugator Angel, and really force the issue. I love this attack from Ben Sec. It's, it's, it's accomplishing two things at once for him. It's giving him lethal threats, and it's padding his life total so that he doesn't get, you know, randomed out by something. All right, so one of the devils is going to block the That's near interesting. Chaplain. Oh, but wait, oh, there's more. Borrowed, Borrowed Grace, Grace is game. For, for the wit. Wow. Ben So sec. Borrowed Grace there is five mana total, three white, white, to give your team plus two, plus two if right. you're going to pay Right. You can either cost. go plus two or plus, you plus two on power or plus two on toughness to yeah. all your creatures, or you can pay the escalate cost of one white and do both. <laughs> so he got in for six, and uh, that was enough to kill Seth. Wow, what a wow. sweet game. <laughs> ben Sec, the KG veteran. Yeah. He's like, welcome to Australia. <laughs> Things are poisonous here. <laughs> you remember, every animal in Australia is trying to kill you. Yeah, and I'm one of them. Never more true in a mad than at a magic tournament. No kidding. <laughs> wow, that subjugator angel. It was huge. Uh, wow. You know, and, it, and, and it's, and it's I, I don't think that the, I think that there's a, a real... Uh, urge for some players to maybe even just go subjugate or angel go there. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's it's a difficult attack to make to send your whole team in there and sort of be pants down uh, on the, on the crackback. <laughs> but that's exactly what he needed to do. Gave oh, him yeah. exactly the turn he needed. To <laughs> one one. You see Ben talking a lot. A lot of a lot of uh, old school Australian players very excited uh, about Ben's uh, success here and. You know, all his old friends that he, he's played magic with are, have been coming up and asking him how he's doing, and they're all along the rail, and he's, he's you know, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, he's yeah. still up, you one know, one. maybe. Oh, he's still got it. Ben's lived in the States for a while now. Oh, yeah. Down you know, in California, years, right? Yeah. Yeah. So 
Seth Manfield, of course. Uh, you know, he said current world champion, ranked number one, eight Grand Prix top eights in his career. Uh, you know, he's got five wins. Uh, two Just Pro Tour top wins. eights, yeah. Was on the Hall of Fame ballot this year. He's had such, such a, you know, he's been been playing magic for a long time but just had some some recent success yeah that's the thing is that like back in the day seth manfield like won a gp and kind of didn't do a whole lot else but modern day seth manfield has been on an absolute rip and tear for the last two years especially this year we haven't talked about it much today but also is in a position to steal the uh grand prix pro points leader yeah i I mean look you know he He really is in a position it's insane We'll be keeping you updated, by the way, as we go through here. Players drop their opening hands here for game three. And Seth Mayfield leads things off with a swamp. Planes for Ben Sack. I see the campaign of vengeance. And a swamp, too. All right, Olivia's Dragoons. That could be a big swing later on, for sure. And the Sigardian Priest for Ben Sack. How many of those does he have? Does he have just the two? We've seen two. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know if just he has two. more. Yeah. In come the Dragoons. Wow, this early developing stage of the game is super important here for both of these decks. Dragoons. They're both aggressive. And, yeah. you know, if the Dragoon can can madness out a creature. Or, 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 or madness out an alchemist greeting, a card we've talked about. Mm-hmm. You know, not seeing it madness. Yeah, it looks like he didn't need it here. Yeah, dead weight on the priest. He could still do it, though. Yeah. <laughs> See if he has it. No. Yeah, there's a Dawn Griff. Another priest in hand for Ben, it looks like. I think I saw one of those flying around outside the building here. No, did, did it have a did it have a mohawk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, then that probably it's what it an was. Australian Dawn Griff. <laughs> They got some weird animals. They, they here, really right? do. Even the pigeons are just like really strange. <laughs> All right. Dragoon comes in. Yeah, he's going to offer the trade. Ben's yeah, not ben, interested. Ben, yeah. I mean, ben, ben also knows he has that campaign of engines. So if he can get any kind of uh, swarm of creatures on the board, yeah. he can really have some huge swings with an attack. Well, and, and that's that's an interesting point you bring up, BDM, because he, he has to maintain a board state. Right. <laughs> Again, you know, I, we talked about it at the onset of the match, but, you know, if, if Seth just kills most of your creatures, Campaign of Vengeance looks terrible, right? But if you can get a nice little board state going, then it's fine. Yeah, so this this goes to your point about the card, because next turn, Ben could play Campaign of Vengeance. And it's and not then, very good. And then it's just like And this, this is where, like, I was comparing it to Faithbearer Paladin, where I'd rather just have that card in a lot of scenarios. Right, right. You know? But there are decks that can make a lot of tokens where Campaign of Vengeance can be way better. The interesting thing here is I'm curious if Seth is going to attack. We saw a Drogskull Shieldmate from Ben earlier, but not against Seth. I don't think Seth knows he has it, and there it is. All right, Drogskull Shieldmate flashes in. It's a 2-3. It's not good news for you, Seth. Maybe he can Alchemist greeting it with Trigger Up or something, but otherwise he's just going to gobble up the Dragoon or, or force a or discard. Yeah, just force him to discard it's, a card. It, neither are particularly great. I, you know, if Seth has cards he just really doesn't need, then it's not the the end of the world here. But well, and again, we saw a card like Ruthless Disposal in, in uh, Seth's deck. Yeah. And, you know, and you really like... You tax, need the extra being cards. Being able to tax yeah. those cards is huge. Okay, but he does have the Alchemist screening. Okay. So he flies up over the, the shield mate and is able to madness out the four, da- four damage removal spell to not kill bad. the flyer. Yeah, it's not bad at all. I mean, it ends up being a one for one, and he gets to keep his Dragoon. It, it, it ben is still fine here, though. Look at the board, right? He's got a 2-3 versus a 2-2 two, two that can sometimes get flying. It's, it's not the end of the world for him. He needs creatures is what he needs. Like, if he could play two creatures this turn, that would be fantastic. There's a Guardian of the Pilgrim. One creature. So okay, he gets get him for three. three. Does he have another creature to play and then follow up with the campaign? That would be ideal. I, I think he has a Guardian Priest. Fine. Yeah. As long as it says creature on it. <laughs> yeah, there it is. And by the way, his hand is, is kind of absurd at this point because he's, in addition to that campaign of engines, yeah. he's got a choking restraints. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Wow, things looking good for Ben Sec, even though he's been a little behind here. 
Deadweight and Alchemist Greeting taking out two of his creatures and a Dragoon doing good work on getting him down to 14. Is the Sigardian Priest wearing a Dawn Griff on its hat? Uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> All right, in comes the Dragoon. Ben has no interest in blocking that. Again, Ben really can't afford to, to enter combat with these creatures because he does have the Campaign of Vengeance. It's, a, it's pushing him in a certain direction, but you're going to see how powerful it can be, especially if he gets to have more creatures here. Okay, there's Thermo Alchemist. Not a great card to choke and restraint. But, but this looks beautiful for, beautiful for Ben. Looks like he's going to wait on the Campaign. He may have drawn another creature that he'd rather cast and just keep developing his board out. Because right. he can just all in attack here. Look at this. And that, that's what he does. He's also, remember, representing Borrowed Grace, which you had in that first game. And this is uh, something that, for the rest of the match, Seth is going to have to consider it at every circumstance. Is, well, if I just don't block here, how much am I taking? You know? And in this case, it's 11. Oh, if he if he has the borrowed grace, yeah, yeah absolutely. If if he has borrowed grace and he's got the five mana and 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 Seth's like sure no blocks, he takes eleven. If he does block, he probably fires it off anyway, kills the thermal alchemist and gets in for, you know, seven damage or whatever. It, it, borrowed <laughs> grace is good. <laughs> Seth's like, why is he attacking with the guardian priest? Mm -hmm. And he's figured it out. I mean, Seth knows what's up. The thing is, is that this is also just a perfectly fine situation for Ben to say, sure, take three. And that's what happened. What does he have? The paladin. Yep. Oh wow! Big pair of paladin. Next turn's going to be explosive <laughs> for Ben Sack. If Seth lets his shields down, he can choking restraints and just get in for a huge hit. And if the coast looks relatively c clear for Ben, then he can slam that campaign of vengeance and uh, maybe even just win. The, you know, the thing I do like about campaign in this type of matchup is that it does tend to be race. Centric. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and that that is where that card can really be good. I again, I I like Faith Bear Paladin a lot. I think it's similar role, uh -oh, but spell incoming. Yeah, looks right. like he's gonna certain, certain death. death. Yeah. Again, fair enough. That race. Yeah. Ben drops to nine. Yeah, but see, this Up is where that cam Seth. that campaign of vengeance is really gonna throw a monkey wrench into the works for Seth, because he he's trying to kill him, right? He's trying to like, okay, you do you take two, you get hit with a dragoon. I'm going to just try to race you. Turn with yeah, ping Alchemist. you with this thing. And, and, and you know, if he if Ben just like, gains three life and does a bunch of damage here, it's really bad for him. There it there is. There it is. Attack with everything. Uh, it's really bad news for Seth Manfield. He's only going to attack. He's going to leave the priest back. Yeah, it is two damage that he can prevent by tapping the Dragoons, and he can only gain one, though. So every, yeah. every time a creature attacks, you gain one. Your opponent loses one. So yeah. that's two there. And then, oh, by the way, they're still attacking and get to do Correct, damage yeah. to you and your creatures. Yeah, that that was big. And this is a this is a game where if you look at Seth Manfield's graveyard, it's dead weight alchemist creating certain death. <laughs> like he has killed creatures for Ben. Ben has refused to trade. He correctly surmised that he does not want to trade his creatures off to try to maximize on on cards like. Uh, Borrow Grace and the Campaign of Vengeance. But still, Seth, you know, in the really removal-heavy color pair here, has mowed down a bunch of his creatures, but Ben has just drawn enough to, to keep the Campaign of Vengeance relevant, and it's really paying off for him now. All right. Seth plays an Ember Eye Wolf. Cute. <laughs> oh. oh, is that what you're doing? Mm -hmm. How cute. The old turn ten Ember Eye Wolf. <laughs> uh, turn ten, I've died to that turn ten Ember, ember it's Eye probably Wolf. Probably better on turn <laughs> ten than on two. <laughs> He's only got one additional red mana to pump it. Also, Ben has a Sigardian Priest to keep the Dragoon or the Wolf at bay. I mean, re really. I'm not Seth sure where we're at in the turn here. Seth needs a, a ruthless disposal or something like that to get back, like to just like take out a big chunk of Ben's army. All right, taps the dragoon. 
says, come on in with the Ember Eye Wolf if you want to. It's interesting. He, he stands to give up an additional point of damage by tapping the Dragoon rather than the Ember Eye Wolf, but that could compel Seth to pump his only other red mana source or to use it on the, on the wolf. And okay. so Ben is favoring, favoring that, yeah. which is kind of an interesting decision. Okay, he's, he's going to cast a spell here. Is it good? It's all right. Make mischief. Okay. Don't think it has a target that actually gets killed, no. so he's going to go upstairs with it. Yeah. And that gets Ben down to five. It does, but, he, but Seth is still trying to race this pesky <laughs> campaign. I wonder if we're going to see a choking restraint on a devil. Oh. I haven't seen that yet. If he has it in his hand, it looks like it's the play, though. I mean, we saw a spirit token get murdered earlier. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, but that was in response to a three-mana combat <laughs> trick. <laughs> All right. All right. In comes. And he's not going to tap anything down yeah, offensively. Shield, mate. So seven to eight. Block and then trade off here. This all makes sense. Oh, no. me. you know, I knew he had another because the first one we saw was foil in, a, in the last <laughs> match. And I'm like, well, that one isn't foil. I did not know he had it in his hand, though. And he's going to use that to give to boost the toughness of his creature and prevent it oh, from dying. Are you allowed to ask for a non-foil version? No. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be stamped, so it would still be different. You could still exactly. tell. Exactly. Wow. <laughs> Drug skull shield mate. Foils. The devil token's <laughs> ability. <laughs> All right, now he taps. That was nice. Now a he a taps the uh, Ember Eye Wolf. This one has really fallen, fallen away from Seth Manfield here. Ben's still just at six, though. It's kind of kind of scary to be against the red black deck. You know, you're worried about cards now, like, you know, spread the flames. I'm just not even worried you're about it. You're not even worried about anything. No, bulletproof. Ruthless disposal, maybe a little nerve-wracking. No, nothing. Bensek has venom running through his veins. He grew <laughs> up in Australia. He's fine. Man, it's got to be so cool to come back for Ben and, and smash a, a GP like this, like he's done. Okay. Shoot you with the Thermo Alchemist. And up. Throttle. He's got a throttle. Okay. Okay, I will admit I am now getting slightly scared <laughs> <laughs> if I'm dead. <laughs> he's back down to three. With the Dragoon, you're down to three. <laughs> I mean, he's going to go back up to at least five, <laughs> maybe six here. Seth's like Omar from The Wire. <laughs> he's just not getting... Come at the king. There's oh, the but choking, choking restraints. Choking restraints on a Thermo Alchemist. Attack that's a for lethal five attack. And three triggers Is from... it enough? There's the hand. Wow. <laughs> ben Sack. He's like, yes. 11-0 and I beat Seth Manfield. Wow. Great job by Ben Sack there. I'll give you a, a, a quick update coming into this round. You know, we had talked about that Grand Prix pro player lead. Seth Manfield was 10-0. BBD, 9-1. And, and Saito was 6-3-1. and one. Okay, so Saito's out. Yeah, Saito's pretty much Because BBD out. was already ahead yeah. of Saito. Yeah. So that's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. I guess, I guess there is something to get. But wow. So that BBD is still looking good there. All right. So that was round 11. Ben Sack, Australia. Undefeated, unbelievable. Uh, we got some uh, more magic coming for you soon. We're going to turn it over to uh, Tim Willoughby and Hall of Famer Frank Karsten. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 